Hello, everybody. Hmm. Welcome to the God Talk, guys. My name is Michael Mack. This is my good friend, Michael Coran. Oh. <laughs> and we are here, as we are here every week at this time, to talk about God, talk about faith, talk about religion, spirituality, drawing from faith traditions from all around the world, but most especially drawing from our own lives, because our lives are really the crucible. That's crucible. A uh, good friend was watching last week, and I said the word crucible. I pronounced it crucible, and she um, corrected me gratefully. So um, my dad would be proud of me and pleased with her uh, for having made this correction. Um, but here we are, Michael. This is your program, the first of two, and uh, the first of two. So these are going to be back to back. So we're going to start with Michael's agenda. And I'm not even sure what that is. Um, and then we are going to continue on with, uh, with an idea of my own. So, Michael, take it away. Good. What well, do you I, have for us? Well, I, um, I'm going to. I have a, my own feelings and thoughts about Easter uh -huh. and the crucifixion and resurrection. Okay. And where are we in our Easter journey? In our Lenten journey? You would know much better than I. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I believe. Well, okay, this much I can say. This, is, this coming week in April will be the last full week of our Lenten journey before we begin Holy Week. So I believe that this is the fifth, that this week is the fifth in the whole series. And Lent means, do you know? Oh, do you mean like the, 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 word, the yeah. root? What does it, no, what does it even mean? Not the root. What is, what is the meaning of the word? Lent. We can talk. We can that report. is a great question. Here's, 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 here's my best. Here's yes. my best shot at it. Yes. So Lent is the 40 days preceding Easter, during which we as Christians generally prepare for this most important holiday, most important celebration, most important holy day in the Christian calendar, in which, um, which will culminate in our uh, honoring the crucifixion and death of Jesus and then his rising from the dead. So it's a 40-day expanse, and that's echoed earlier uh, in the 40 days of, uh, it was Noah, right? Uh, 40, day, 40 days and 40 nights. Um, and um, I think the Israelites wandered for 40 days in the wilderness okay. before the Ten Commandments okay. were Okay. And also, I know that uh, Jesus, um, when he first for, began his... Right. Yes, fasted for 40. Fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Yes. So 40 is very important. And in fact, um, 40 was the maximum number of lashes that you could give to somebody. Um, and in fact, that's supposedly why Jesus received 39 because 40 was uh, too much. 39 was okay, 40 too much. Um, anyway, so 40 is an important number. Did, um, have we, did I answer your question? Uh, you, More than you ever wanted no, to no, know. No, not, not quite, but we, will, we, could, we can continue to come back okay. to it uh, if we're on again. Okay. Or we can look up what let literally means. I but, would love to know. Yes. I would love to know. In fact, is this something we could open up to our audience and ask to read from the dictionary? Uh, I, I know a show, actually. Okay. Mind. Yes. Okay. Um, no offense. <laughs> anyway, so this is my, these are my feelings and thoughts, and I'd like to encourage you to interrupt as much as you like. There's, okay. There's still many. There's still this many. is the way. This is many. Interrupt. Yes. If I have something to say, yes. don't hold back. Yes, and this time even a little longer than usual. You can okay. Really... So, so should I set my stopwatch when I start talking? Or... No, no. Okay. I'm more interested in your response to this. So, I'll do my best, So, which is all we can do as human beings. I think it's a week before... No, it's less than a week. I don't know the timing, but I like to call him Jeshua. His, his real name, he was never called Jesus. His original name. Yes. And he's coming into Jerusalem, 
And this is Palm Sunday. And coming up. Sunday yes, coming and, and, is Palm Sunday. And Palm Sunday is how many, how many days before the crucifixion? You know? Well, the crucifixion takes place on Good Friday. So Sunday to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's, That's five days. Wow. Five days. So Palm Sunday, Joshua comes into Jerusalem. Yes. Riding on an ass. Right? On, on, a, uh, on a colt uh, oh. is one interpretation, or a donkey. Yes. yes. And everyone is celebrating. I did this when I was in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. um, with palms. Yes, with palms. Yeah. And it's Palestinians and Christians, it's quite, as well as American Christians. It's mm -hmm. very, very nice because mm -hmm. it's, it's multi-national. Um, and when he comes in, they, if I remember correctly, they say, he is the king, has come. Yes, is that true? Hosanna. Yes. Yeah. And so that's hugely political. Oh, yeah. That is, that's um, sedition, actually. It's very brave. But that's, um, there is a king. His name is Herod. His name is Herod. There is also an emperor. Yes. And so if, if they're, and he's allowing himself to be welcomed as king, he is a revolutionary. Mm -hmm. And therefore, that in itself, especially with all the people following him, is hugely dangerous, an extraordinary political act, extremely brave. And it's also a very risky act to take during Passover. Oh, even because more, yeah. Passover Everybody's was that there. time when everybody all of the Jewish peoples in the surrounding region would come to the temple, come to the one temple. There was only one. Yeah. Come to the one temple, and they would uh, celebrate the Passover. Yes. And it was a, at a time when there was a lot of talk about uh, overthrowing Rome. And so the garrisons, the Roman garrisons, were there in force because every Passover. Yes. Because you had no idea what these... Jewish people were going to do. Um, they so, were oppressed. They, oh, yeah. Yeah. They were. yeah. So, so bring, what, bring in the legions. So what do you think is in Jeshua's heart and mind and the one to the hearts and minds of his small group of close followers, his 12 students, right? And the other people when they're doing this. What is Did in their I, hearts and minds? Are they aware? So you're asking me not only to go back in time, but to put myself into the mind and heart of One, Jesus first, or his first followers. First Joshua, then maybe Peter, and then maybe the women, and then maybe everybody. What is they, do they, are they aware? What are they thinking? Yeah, what are they feeling and thinking yeah. as they're celebrating? Are they aware that they're, this is an act of rebellion and they're, and they're in some ways crucifying their beloved teacher? Is our teacher aware of this? Now, what? where are you now? Are you at Palm Sunday? At Palm Sunday, okay. yes. Um, I would say that for some of the people, as had been foretold in Jewish scripture for thousands of years, hundreds or thousands of years, that there was going to be a coming Messiah. There was going to be a savior. There's going to be someone like David who had the power and authority and way to shrug off the oppression. Yep. Uh -huh. And so for some people who saw and heard about Jesus or Jeshua, yes. for some, this was the guy. Oh, so they weren't afraid. They thought this would really work. Yeah. Wow. It could work. Wow. It's a nonviolent revolution. For the people. Like Egypt. Both for the people who saw or were there, were present for the miracles, but maybe even more importantly for the people who were not there but heard. They heard the stories. Oh, my. That he had, oh, that this one man had miraculous powers. And, and he could come in, as he himself said, oh. riding on clouds of glory. So they expected, and in some ways, as we saw in Egypt before the terrible turn of events, when all the people non-violently rise. You're talking about the recent, uh, the Arab yes, Spring. Yes, yes. But when, if all of Jerusalem non-violently didn't cooperate with Rome, 
Rome would have great difficulty, perhaps. I don't know, but maybe that was the thought. Here's part of the problem. Some were interested in doing it nonviolently, others were not. And there were a lot of different groups who yeah. were interested in the violent overthrow yes. of Rome. That was the way that they understood that the coming kingdom would come. And up to this point, though, uh, Yeshua had done nothing violent whatsoever, as far as we know. As far as we know, yeah. Nothing. Yeah. So was, was he thinking that this would be a, re a successful revolution? Was he thinking that he was putting himself to death at this point? According to the Gospels, he predicted that, this would ha that he was going to be crucified. Well, when, first of all, I have to interject that when we talk about the Gospels, we have to distinguish between the three synoptic Gospels and the Gospel of John. Yeah. Because in the three synoptics, Jesus arrives, Jeshua arrives in Jerusalem a few days before he is crucified. Yeah. Whereas in John, he begins his ministry in Jerusalem, begins his ministry by throwing over yes. the tables but that's of the still, merchants. We, I will go there later. I, I, I would like to get to that. But So leave, leave, leave the Gospels out. What do you think Jeshua is thinking and feeling when he's, when he's being very dearly celebrated by everybody. I'm not sure if I can answer that question. I think the closest that I could come to that question is to answer if that were me. Okay. If that, if were, that were me coming in. Yes. But here's the thing. Um, I, as far as I know, am only a human being. What the Gospels tell us, especially the Gospel of John, is that Jesus had awareness of his place in the cosmic order, had his place in the divine order. He knew his relationship with the Father, as he often referred to God. He knew his relationship to human beings, and that he was something of an intermediary. And so it depends on who you ask. And I think if you ask the writer of each gospel, you're going to get a slightly different answer. I love what my, one of my favorite philosophers, Kierkegaard, said. The story, not the story, the Jesus or Jeshua being human, like us, mm -hmm. moves me much more. If he was the supernatural figure that could um, do things supernaturally, including defeat all armies, then that would make it a way less touching story to me. Um, if he's one of us, fully one of us, which I believe is is Christian teaching. That's theology. He's a fully, fully human. Fully human and fully divine. And, rec and, and, and we all, and he, as he said, there are greater things will be done by his students than him. Mm -hmm. We are all fully human and fully divine. Mm -hmm. So if he's a, a human being like you and me, and going into Jerusalem, so let's leave out the divinity except the divinity that we all feel. Let's turn your question back on you and say, if this was you, wow. which is really where it seems like you want to go, no, or at least I'm heading, if this was you, oh, I'd much rather ask Michael Coran, riding the donkey. Oh, I'd be so scared. I would be so scared. I don't like taught in prison. I... Would you not be amazed? I would... Amazed at the workings of the Father that had you riding into oh the capital. I would feel that on the I equivalent feel... of I don't know a Toyota Corolla, I... and everybody waving the palms. I would feel this was temptation. Actually, I would feel ah, I'm not not judging anybody, but yeah. if, especially after seeing what happened to Jeshua, I would not. I would not go. <laughs> Maybe. But everybody wants you to go. I know, I, but I'm very good. I Not learned, only they're pulling you and pushing you I at learned, the same time. Thanks to they my, want you. Thanks to my dear beloved parents who force fed me when I was young. So I was a very young little baby and they didn't feed me except every four hours. And I refused the food because I didn't want to be humiliated. So you're saying that you would refuse? I have learned to say no much to the... So this would be much, like more like the life much, of Brian than the life of Jesus. I, I don't know if you ever saw the life I did, of Brian. I did, when you okay. can see it again. But I would say no. I would say... I can't I, do it. Unless I was starting, like in Egypt, unless I carefully, like Gandhi did, 
say we're going to keep nonviolent. We're going to let all the authorities know we're nonviolent. That I would have done that so that they don't be afraid that we're not in any way whatsoever going to be, this is not a violent takeover. And don't call me the king of the Jews. I would say call me something else. Mm -hmm. Um, call me. It would be a very different teacher. gospel. Call me teacher. It would be a very. I, I'm a teacher. Yeah. I. Well, that's where he started. Yes. He started. They were calling him rabbi. Yes. Teacher. Hosanna! Here comes the rabbi. Yes, I would. I, that I would do. Wouldn't it be? Yeah. So, I can't imagine. I can't help but think that it would be hard on some level to resist. Yes, I. I to I, resist. And it that. might have been. It might have been. A temptation. But here's the, here's the thing. Here's where I, I have a really difficult time putting myself into the, the head of Jesus. I mean, of course, that's every... What this, that's what this Lent season is about, to feel it. To feel that you're there, yes. Oh, yeah. And yeah. that we're in the tomb. I remember going to Easter Sunday. You're in the tomb. How are you in the tomb this year? And how are you going to rise from the tomb? The, the wonderful pastor asked the whole congregation. Very recently at the shrine of the St. Clement Shrine, which is downtown on Boylston Street. There was a workshop, a weekend workshop, by Father Timothy Gallagher. And what he was talking about was the Ignatian exercises, the, um, the, the exercises that St. Ignatius um, first devised centuries ago. And um, a friend of mine went to that, and she told me a little bit about it. And she said that uh, much of it, much of the practice, had to do with imagining ourselves in these various yes. scenes in the gospel. That we are witnesses to this. What would it look like? What would it smell like? Yes. How would it feel? Would we feel the sun on our shoulders, or would we feel the chill of the wind? Or oh, I was there, so I yeah. Know. I mean, I, yeah. I was in Jerusalem. Yeah. And it was it's a beautiful? It was this beautiful day as today. Well, it's actually hotter. It was hotter when I did it. Yeah. But it was very lovely. It was very lovely. So I think I would have passed or given people instructions, nonviolent communication, it's easy in hindsight, and let the announce to the authorities this is what we're doing, which is what Gandhi does when he walked to the ocean to get salt mm -hmm. again, and say we're not violent, and but we're going to do this. Here's the thing, though. And then why are we doing this? That's Here, another question. Here's the thing. Why are we doing this at all? Here's the thing. Yes. I think that your way, which sounds eminently reasonable yeah. and effective as a way to... To what? Well, that's the question. Because the way that Jesus or Jeshua did resulted in the most sweeping revolutionary change. I think that there is no single person in world history who had a greater effect on world history than Jesus Christ. Time's man of the century, I think. Um, Was man of the century? No. I think at, at the year 2000, <laughs> yeah. they... Um, man of, I, man of, the, of the two millennials? I think so. I think so. And... Um, and it bears out that there, I don't know if, I cannot think so of a this single. Is, this is, if you forgive me, a good career move? Is that what we're saying? You need forgiveness. No, I didn't. <laughs> You're going to have to go to confession for that one, buddy. Yeah, I confess to you. All right, so, um, but how forgive is it? Me. How forgive is me. it? Hold, hold this thought just for a moment. That this illiterate, well, reasonably illiterate, ragtag, um, let me back up. You save that for a little while. Okay. You're, you're, you're in a different... I'm, no, I, I gotta say this. I gotta, say, I gotta it. say it. Never mind, I guess not. Yes. That this uh, itinerant preacher, yep. poor itinerant preacher in this backwater yep. of the Roman Empire with a bunch of uneducated um largely ignorant people without any ed with very little in the way of education peasants not a cambridge crowd not a cambridge crowd yeah. ignorant maybe but not how educated. is it yes you, you I, I think on some level you have to admit 
that regardless of whatever you think about the miracles that Jesus is reported to have performed. Yes. That the fact that something this um, seemingly inconsequential would become the greatest force, the greatest religion in Western civilization, um, do more in terms of... Um, Careful. <laughs> stop. I know. I want to stop. I'm walking in <laughs> tightrope. So let me just stop there. You get the idea. You get the idea. Yes. Okay. That's a miracle. That is a miracle. Okay, let's go back. All Meanwhile, right. we're back on Palm Sunday. All right. So we don't, so um, we discover that, we, you asked me what I would think. And so I would have made sure I would have taught everybody and informed the authorities, but I still don't know why I'm doing this. Why am I letting this celebration happen? Unless, as the, I want to get crucified. And what if, as it's taught in Christian theology, Yes. what if, It's the plan, man. What if that was the plan? What if we are all part of this magnificent, and, impossible, and, preposterous, and, why, and, and beautiful plan that is, I'm just throwing the idea okay, out let's there. Let's just keep it human for a while, and then we can go there. Let's just keep it on the human level. Uh, why? This is the God talk, guys, after all. Yes, but I think it's important to recognize the, the human, the divinity in all of us. And since Jesus is, or Jeshua is fully human, I like to, at least in my, I only have another five minutes, keep it on the human level. All right. So why as a human being is he doing this? I mean... It must have been hard with everybody coming to him and wanting to be healed. You saw Jesus Christ Superstar, yes? Oh, I love it. My so favorite that, yes, I, Mine too. I, one of my favorite. I love it. But it must, but I don't, is he losing it? I don't think so. In the early 20th century, yes, it was proposed by one of the um, eminent psychologists of the time, and I forget who it was, that Jesus Christ uh, had schizophrenia. So that's one way you to know, look I at don't it. Wanna, I, yeah, I don't want to go there either. If, as, if, if, if you were doing it, if, I was, if you were doing it, what would you do? If your followers said... What would you do if you found that you had a charisma, that you, you had a way with people, and not only that, but that you could heal people? That yes. you could go out onto Mass Ave right now. Yes. And by blessing somebody... Help them, yes. Help them. I agree with that. Would you keep doing it? Many people can. Oh, yeah. Christian scientists do that yeah. all the time with yeah. each other. And they're, they're not getting killed. They have Mayor Baker Eddy has this beautiful cathedral in the middle. Why would he do this? I don't understand. I still don't get it. And we only have three and a half minutes, but we can be back maybe after Easter. Why do this? Because there's maybe a hint which is very different, but the same. I think that people pour over the Gospels again and again and again and again because Jesus ultimately is a very mysterious figure. And they have been asking exactly that question and more for millennia. Now, he really was asking for it because in case they missed this message, which was pretty clear that I'm, I'm, I'm the new king, it also in the first three Gospels... He goes into the temple and makes a whip, makes a a, a a whip of cords, a whip of cords, and and overturns tables, mm -hmm. and, and that's also that that's more violent in in at least throwing over the the money and so on. That's really disrupting order, as you said in Passover week. So he is really, 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 really saying, "Kill me." He's really saying that for whatever reason. And maybe, as you said, he. And why would he have to die this way? Because his students did not know this. Not just the gospels say that he told them they didn't understand. In it our all. last fifteen seconds. No, we have two. I minutes. have to two minutes. Do we? Oh, do we have two minutes? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, well, what the church would say is that he had to do it. 
That's why he did it. He had to do it, and he had to do it in exactly that way. Okay. No other okay, way. So let's keep, let's, that's a wonderful answer, but I want to keep it the way you were doing it. Okay, he's human now. And his, first of all, his... Let's say he is human. His students... That does not mean that he can't not feel compelled oh, yes, to do this. Yes, but his students, For whatever his reason. students don't understand it at all. They're not remotely prepared. He didn't even tell them. They're all shocked and they all run away. They can't believe it. So this is something he kept to himself, really. I mean, the gospel has him telling them, but they never understood. So what is, it's, it's a very compelling mystery. I just want to understand him without criticizing. Just understand. I understand that. I understand. And your perplexity is exactly the perplexity I think that every rational thinking human being comes to this story and faces. Me too. There are parts of the gospel I just don't get. And I keep going back, and every time I go back and reread, there's something new that's revealed to me about this character. But ultimately, I will not get to I the have, bottom I of have, it. I have this one possible answer, alas. Uh, I'm this, we're just exploring here, is that he really feels that he is going to be triumphant. That he feels the power, he feels the support of his people, and that this could be a messianic revolution like that happened and in Egypt. And ultimately, that's according I, to the Gospels, he is that's, triumphant. That's, according to the Gospels, Right, but I, he I is. think that surprised him and everyone. That's my guess, that the power was so great that he thought, yes, as they did in Egypt, we can do it. And then he improvised when we he have discovered five